welcome to Spark TV. Hello. Thank you so much for having me on. I'm so excited to talk to you because we have already like talked a whole podcast episode and then we're like, oh shit, we should <laughs> record. Exactly. Oh, I love it. I love it. Let's, because I know we're going to get into it. Let's just start things off by telling everyone who you are and what you do. So my name is Tanya Hall and I am the owner of a little company called The Event Wanderer Co. And we do all things wedding invitations, signage, printing. Um, We are based here in Melbourne or just outside of Melbourne on the beautiful Bass Coast. So heading down towards the Penguins and Phillip Island, if anyone knows where that is, it's gorgeous. But we pretty much service everyone across Australia. So we can send wedding invitations and signage anywhere. And we absolutely adore what we do. So it's, you know, it's beautiful to be part of everybody's love journey because, you know, weddings are such a special time. And we also kind of like to step back in and help with birthdays and christenings and anniversaries and celebrations. But weddings is definitely one of our specialties. So lots of fun. Definitely. I love it. Do you get lots of stressed out brides? Yes, no. (laughs) Generally, like hopefully when they kind of come to us for the invitation side, they're pretty chilled. Yeah, and no. It's just like it's the very early stages of planning. It's like the, oh, okay, we've got our venue. Now we need to start getting our guests in. Like what do we want to do with our themes? And then the more we kind of get closer to the day, we do start to get a little bit stressed out. But if I've done my job properly – and I've worked with my couples, you know, really, really well, then I'm first and foremost not adding to their stress. I'm actually alleviating their stress because Mm -hmm. where I like to help them is when we kind of get to on the day when we're dealing with things like seating charts and menus and welcome signs, I'll kind of step in and go, hey, rather than me um, deliver everything directly to you guys and then you happening to take everything to your venues, Mm. Just tell me who your venue contact is. Tell me who your wedding planner is. And particularly if they're here in Melbourne, I'll literally just deliver all their stuff directly to the venue and kind of take that added pressure off them because nobody wants to be running around the week before their wedding wondering where their seating chart is. So, yeah, if I can alleviate that one little element of stress, I will do whatever I can to help them out along the way. I love that so much because I feel like that is such an amazing business lesson. Like if you can put yourself in your customer's shoes and think, what are they going through right now? And I mean, weddings is a very specific example, but I mean, anyone think of any customer you have, what are they going through right now? And how can I make their life easier? I just think that's a very smart business strategy. (laughs) A hundred percent. And I think particularly when it comes to weddings, everyone's so inclined to think that they can do so much themselves as well. Mm. And then there's almost like this stark realization, the closer you get to the wedding day, that the day is actually about you. Yeah. And it's about you and your partner kind of getting up and making that commitment in front of your loved ones. And then because it is about you and, you know, we're almost inclined to do a lot of stuff for other people and it's about your guests. And mm. we think that we can also be in every other place you know multiple places at once and on your wedding day you can't like on the wedding day it is about you you need to be the center of attention and so it's not physically possible for our couples to be you know running around doing the styling wondering where everything is to be set up and that's kind of where we come in and that's with also people like wedding planners and stylists and you know there's all these people within the beautiful wedding industry who are there to support couples along their way. So, yeah, it's a it's a wonderful, wonderful industry to be a part of. Um, and we we just love it. Like we we fell into it by accident and that's that's a whole other story in itself. Well, tell me. Yeah. No, I want to know. That's literally one of my <laughs> questions is how on earth did you get into I, this? <laughs> so we fell into this. I Look, long story short, weddings is just one part of our business. Um, sorry, we, weddings and stationery is one business we do. My other business that I do is I'm an online business manager and part of that is one of my beautiful clients a long time ago was a wedding planner, came to me in a bit of a jam Mm. and she was like, look, I need help. I've got a client who needs a seating chart, but she wants it to be in gold because that was their theming. I had some contacts from a former life when I was an event manager 
put the feelers out to some sign writers and they were like, yep, we can definitely help you out. So in the end, created all the signage for my beautiful client and then kind of was like, oh, hold on. I actually quite enjoy doing this. So, Mm. you know, just by making one seating chart, one welcome sign and some place cards for her, it kind of snowballed from there. And it's funny because even as a kid, I used to make, um, used to make cards with rubber stamps. Like you used to make this, like get the rubber stamps with the ink. And then oh, yes. my mum used to sell them in a news agency. And I used to do that as a kid and would sell the cards for like a dollar. So it's really funny that, you know, come down the track 30 odd years and I'm nearly 40 now. And I've actually got a full on proper stationary business doing proper invitations. And yes, yeah, like it was kind of meant to be, but I've had totally. to go through, That's had so to go full through circle. a few careers in between. Yeah. So it's full circle and going through a few different careers in between as well, obviously. But um, yeah, that's kind of how we we accidentally fell into into wedding stationery, and then that all kind of happened during COVID, obviously. But COVID was a bit of a blessing in disguise because it gave us the time to actually research, mm. build a portfolio, do our designs, get everything up and running, and really kind of build the business the way that we want it to be. So we're we're three, nearly three years in now, which is good. And it's kind of at a point where we're really ready to go full time with it and see our little baby grow more than anything. So yeah, very exciting times. It's so good. And you mentioned having a background in events. So give me a quick rundown on what that career looked like. And then when you decided to make the leap into um, online business manager. (laughs) So, well, I have COVID to thank for the leap um, <laughs> because obviously COVID kind of shut leap down. Leap in inverted commas, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> shut down all the events. But long story Ooh. short, I was a event manager for uh, Tennis Australia for the Australian Open. So I spent uh, wow. eight years working on probably one of the biggest sporting events here in Melbourne, which was amazing. So also didn't really know what a summer was for a long time. And it's probably taken me five years to actually figure out what a summer is because <laughs> um, I, f- I finished up with them back in 2019. But that was amazing. And working on such an international event too, it taught me so much about not just myself, about resilience, about business, because we were across everything as event managers. We were, we learn about HR, we learn about strategy, we learn about management, we learn about finance, we were marketing, we we learnt everything that there was. We were we were operations and logistics. It was such a varied role and I'm forever grateful for everything that I learnt as part of that. And then when I finished up with them, when I I, I just got to the point where I learnt as much as I could and it was time for a new challenge. I ended up going to work for a friend of mine who incidentally had also worked at Tennis Australia and he was building a brand activation company. And through him, I got to kind of see another side of events, which was more bespoke retail-based brand activations, working again for a massive company, um, going in and building their brand activations on a week-by-week basis across Australia. We were going in again, we were doing massive sporting events, we were doing events like Grand Prix, we were doing uh, festivals over summer, all that type of thing. And then that obviously came to a crashing halt when COVID hit. And that was just as we were starting to get into the full swing of it as well. And it was mm. kind of surreal because I was standing there the day um, the Grand Prix got shut down and I was actually at the Grand oh, Prix. Oh, wow. And it was so weird. Like I was inside the gates going, okay, like there should be people in here now. Like where is everybody? Oh, wow. And there's literally like five, 600 people just at the gate entrance, like wanting to come in and nobody knew what was going on. And it was just really, really surreal from our point of view. And I, I literally had friends ringing me because they were watching the TV where the premier was making the announcements and all that. And they're like, oh, the Grand Prix has been shut down. And I'm like, uh, what? Yeah. And like, no so, one told me I'm here. <laughs> I'm standing here. And so, yeah, that kind of, that was kind of the beginning of the end. So that was really weird. Um, and then obviously, you know, COVID happened and we got, we got put into lockdown and it was kind of during that, that I was kind of, we were all working part time and trying to keep events going and moving into the online event space, which, you know, Mm. we were forced to adapt and for want of a better word, pivot as everyone that, that golden word. We did love the word pivot Pivot. during that time, didn't we? (laughs) It just reminds me of that Friends episode when Ross got the couch. <laughs> yeah, that. And just, oh, that, that's, that's what comes to mind and just screaming. Oh. Um, 
Um, and then I was actually really, really lucky that during COVID, a girlfriend of mine, she started, um, she started building out a virtual assistance agency and oh. she'd been doing VA work herself for some time and she'd been glowing, sorry, growing her client roster and she got to a point where she couldn't handle it herself anymore. So she kind of reached out to me and was like, hey, do you want some extra work given, you know, I wasn't working full time? And I'm like, yes, I'll take anything. And from that, that's kind of where I started as a VA. And then it was kind of nice to kind of take that step back from being mm-hmm. a full on manager and just going back into being, you know, a VA and having that breathing space. And because being a VA and being an OBM, two very, very different roles, you know, you've got one where you're just being led by the business owner. Whereas when you're an OBM, you're really stepping fully into someone's business and you're working with them from a strategic point of view to really mm-hmm. move their business forward. So it was good to be able to kind of take a bit of a break because um, we had a lot of personal stuff going on at the same time. But then over the course of probably the last two years, the VA side's tapered off and I've really stepped back up into back up into the business manager role and the consulting role and going back into the strategic role, which I love because that's what people want. They want somebody there mm. who is kind of on the journey with them. Yes. And I think, I think now, like, as I said, I'm, I'm nearly 40. I've been in the business industry for 20 odd years. I've got my own businesses. I've, you know, my partner's got his businesses and we're running them. So we, we all come from experience now. So it's rather than me just sit here and let my clients tell me what to do. It's so much more beneficial for us to actually work together and they don't feel alone as a result either. And they, you know, I I can just have weekly meetings with some of my clients and we just sit there and chat for an hour and they walk away and they're so much happier because they know that they're not alone in their business. They're not sitting in their offices, in their houses and being on their own. And that's the greatest thing for them more than anything. And and also for me. And it's really interesting. I was literally just having this conversation this week, you know, as solo or even small team, you know, small businesses, it can be really hard. A, you know, you mentioned the loneliness, but also just like getting out of your own way and thinking strategically and planning and looking at the bigger picture, setting the vision, the big stuff. It can be really hard when you're by yourself in your oh. house behind your laptop, like, and you're like, oh my God, the to do list, all the stuff. Like, sometimes you need that person to actually have the sounding board and those larger, more strategic conversations. A hundred percent. And it's, it's a funny one. Like I, I think back to you, I had a, a meeting with a client yesterday and the reason we had, we, we have fortnightly meetings. And one of the things that we realized a few weeks ago is, and, and everyone's guilty of this. Like we all freeze up when we have to talk about our own businesses. Not everyone, not everyone is like naturally able to be put on the spot and talk about their mm. business. It happens to me sometimes mm. happens to everybody, but it's really funny. Like with this particular client and I love it a bit. The second I get her talking about a subject that she's passionate about, she'll go. Yeah. I'm like, but put her in front of a camera and trying to get her to do that for a social media reel <laughs> won't happen. So we actually teed this up yesterday and I said, right, I'm going to put you on the spot, but I'm not going to put you on the spot because you're going to know that I'm going to start doing this. And so we did like a pseudo interview where we literally just for an hour talked and we recorded the whole thing. And I, pretty much have gone away. And I think we've now probably got a good two, two months worth of real content out of that discussion. That is so good. But it was so good for her because she's like, all I needed was somebody to talk to. Yes. And it's just that whole concept of, she said, and as she said to me, she's like, if I'd have had to have done that in front of a camera, I would have seized up on my own. I would have got nervous, even though there's nobody in the room to put pressure on me. She said, it's just because it's me internalizing and putting pressure on myself. But because I'm here and it's just me and her having a conversation, it was just so much easier and it just took took the pressure off. And it is, it, it's just good to have somebody there who you can mm. almost spitball ideas off. Yeah. And, even, and I, I know, I know that's, that's been the greatest thing for me is just knowing that I've got somebody there that I can talk to as well. Mm. And that's, that's what I love about my clients because they're just as interested in my business as I am in their businesses. So it kind of goes both ways. Like my client from yesterday, she's getting married in four weeks time. 
Oh, cool. And she was telling me, she was telling me all, and they're getting married in Dublin. And oh, wow. Yeah, so she's, she's in the process of planning an international wedding. And she was telling me all about it. And she's like, oh my God, my hen's part, my bridal shower is going to be in this amazing restaurant. And I was like, have you done your bridal shower invites? And she's like, oh no. She's like, oh, I was just going to do an email. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm going to do those for I don't you. Think and so. she's like, oh my God, can you make them look pretty? And I'm like, leave them with me. And so it's that whole beautiful thing of, she's like, she knows what I do on the side. And she's like, "You, I'm just going to leave them with you. And it's, yeah, it's that beautiful rapport. It's, it's, I love it. And I'm so incredibly blessed with my clients that I have. Like I've got such like-minded clients that, yeah, I, I love them all to bits and they're just, they're the greatest assets that we have as a business. So yeah, mm. incredibly blessed. Totally. And it's so beautiful because I think, you know, what we're talking about here is building great relationships, you know, and surrounding ourselves as business owners with like-minded people, with great communities, with people who are going to hype us up, cheer us on, yep. you know, but also have the hard conversations when we need to have the hard conversations. Yeah. Yep. You, know, you can't be afraid to have the hard conversations, which can be tough, mm. but I always find that once you do have them, it actually kind of solidifies your relationship a bit more and it builds more trust at the end. Totally. Yeah. And it's also like, I always find that's the buildup that's the problem. You know, it's the anticipating that hard conversation. Once you have it, it's like, ah, the weight of the world is off your shoulders. And I also find too, that generally if something's going wrong in a business relationship, there's actually external factors. Yeah. And so it's also kind of the whole, okay, if there is something going wrong, let's have an, let's have a conversation and look at the external factors that are playing into it. Because if there is something going on externally, then are there other ways that we can help? Because if something changes in a dynamic, in a relationship with a person that you like, that you know, and like something changes, there's got to be a reason for it. And yes. it's just about being empathetic to other people as well and going, okay, like what's happened? Like if something's not right, just let's think outside the square here and just not be so quick to judge either. Oh, totally. And like, I think now, like, you know, I look, I try and be ultra positive and yeah. bury my head in the sand a little bit about any external factors. But I do recognize that, you know, we are going through a bit of a crazy time. Well, we oh. have been for many years, you know, in terms of economy, you know, yep. the cost of living crisis is on the bloody news every day. <laughs> yep. You know, people are stressed. 100%. You know, and they've got families to look after and all of this personal stuff going on whilst trying to balance either being a business owner or being, you know, even an employee in a business, yep. being a business professional, everyone's going through so much right now. I love what you just said. Like maybe we need a little empathy. Maybe we just need to be kind to each other right now. And that's, that's a hundred percent. And it's, it's kind of like we've adapted, like particularly with our wedding stationary business, like you talk about the cost of living crisis, we've kind of sat there and gone, okay, how do we actually address this within our business? And how do we still ensure that all of our clients get what they want? How do they still get the luxury, the magic, the beautiful weddings that they dream of, but we deliver it at a price point that actually works for them. And particularly for us, like the answer was Canva. Like we love Canva. Yes. Um, I'm such a big advocate for Canva. And yeah. it's like, so we, we literally brought in a, um, a, a printing offering. So it's like, if you design all of your invitations in Canva, you send mm -hmm. them to me and I'll send them off to my beautiful printers and they'll be the ones that create the magic because that's what they do. I definitely don't do it. They're the ones with the card. They're the ones with the ink. They're the ones that make it all real. So it's just kind of, you know, facilitating access to those printers, like our trade printers are that they won't deal direct to the public. They'll only deal with graphic designers like ourselves mm. and businesses. So it's like, well, how do we facilitate access for, you know, the general public who want that particular item? Well, that's it. You go through us. And then particularly for our clients too, they then get the benefit of us having a look over their designs, ensuring that they're pretty, that they're the way that they should be. You know, we might make a minor tweak here and there, like in terms of their font size or something. But then, you know, all of our clients are walking away absolutely happy at the end of the day because they've got 
got what they wanted at a price point that actually works within their budget because mm. particularly given what we do, I'm fully aware that, you know, invitations do have a tendency to end up in the garbage. Yes. Um, not everybody wants to keep them. But it's it's also looking at your other options, like there's digital options, you can send them mm. as emails, there's there's all those things. And I think as a business owner, we need to actually adapt and be willing to offer offer those services to our clients who might not necessarily, you know, want to want to pay the high end services that we offer. That's not saying that we don't want them. Like we do want those clients who want to pay them. But if we can if we can adapt and offer our services across a variety of platforms, it's going to be better for us as a business as a whole. Yeah. And I just think there's so much value in meeting our customers where they are. And I just imagine, you know, especially in in your industry, if you create that beautiful relationship and yes, maybe it is a, a lower price point, more accessible for somebody that just wants to get in if they have a great experience, they're telling everyone, like, you know, the thing about weddings is all your friends get married and you all talk. So being able to cater for people in ways that suit them at different price points can, is a great strategy because then, you know, you you get that great word of mouth. And when it's the right time for someone, you do land the higher end customer. Exactly. Exactly. And you're always going to have those clients that want the higher end product or they want the simplicity of not happening to worry about it themselves. Yes. You know, not everybody's going to want to tackle something in Canva or they're not going to want to try it their hand. They they just want the ease of having somebody to do it themselves. And that's where we come in and we do that. So yeah, it's about, it's about kind of offering something. And I think that's kind of what makes us unique because I do have this massive technical background because of the work Mm. that I do do as an OBM. And systems and integration and technology is such a huge part of my daily work with that. And I've been so fortunate that I've been able to bring in all of those elements to this business, to the wedding business and go, okay, how can we make these platforms work for us, for our clients within the wedding business? And then, you know, go forward and make everything so much more functional for everybody else. So yeah, hopefully that's the bit that makes us stand out now, our little niche in the world. But I I love it. And it's really interesting. Systems and processes, (laughs) leveraging technology, integrations, super boring, (laughs) but but so valuable. (laughs) So valuable. And also totally there to make our lives easier. Yes. At the end of the day. So, um, and particularly if it's done right too, if it's done right and it's done smartly, it will so save you so much time along the way. <laughs> what would you say to someone who's like, I don't have time. I'm just so, you know, flat out doing all the things. I don't have time to bring systems and processes and technology to my business. My advice would be that as easy as that is to say, for the time that would take you to actually, let me rephrase that actually. If you were to spend five minutes actually looking at your systems and processes, you would probably end up saving yourself five hours down the line. And if you were to then spend an hour actually implementing those systems and processes, you are going to save yourself 10 hours down the line because the more you can start to look at your systems and processes, look at what you can start to automate as well, then long-term you are going to get to a point where you don't have to do things manually. You don't have to worry about chasing things up. You like, there's so many, so many pieces of technology out there, applications, programs that are designed to make our lives so much easier. And I think we've only scratched the surface with Mm. what's out there. And I know particularly in the online business world, like we've got a host of platforms that we use and we, we run through them. Like Zapier is a big one. Like it makes programs talk to each other and we love it, but then there's, there's other ones coming up and programs just integrating so seamlessly with each other nowadays. Like it's every time I log in, log on into different programs, like, Oh, this one talks to this one now. And this one talks to that one now. And it's just, the world is getting easier. So it's, yeah. Just for an hour investment, you are going to save yourself 10 hours down the time. Sorry, 10 hours down the line. 
Guaranteed. I think it's so good because you are you are spot on, yep. you know, and I feel like it's, it has a bit of a compounding effect. Like mm-hmm. once you do one thing, yep. you're like, oh, I know how to do that now. It's almost like it's a bit of the fear of un- unknown as well. Like I remember like I was getting overwhelmed with replying to direct messages on Instagram and I'd yes. seen everyone, you know, doing the comment or DM thing and having many chats set up. Yeah. And I'd been putting it off and putting it off and putting it off. And, you know, I finally, I'll just do one and see how it works. Right. And I did the one thing and now I'm like, oh my God. (laughs) And then I'm like, how cool. Like each thing, like each funnel in my business. So I want people to listen to the podcast or I want them to download this masterclass or I want them to do X, Y, Z. Now it like takes me minutes to set up a new little funnel flow thing, chatbot message but it is that, oh, I just put it off and put it off and put it off. And now I save so much time just literally copying and pasting the same response to people. It does it all for me. Like I know while we're having this conversation, if someone comments on Instagram, they have the information they need yeah. straight away. But it is that barrier to entry where I think we we are our own worst enemies sometimes and we put it off. And, oh. But if and you just set aside that little bit of time. Yeah. And it's the unknown because it's like, yeah. oh, my God, it's a new program that I've got to learn. But that's where the University of Google and the University of YouTube is amazing because (laughs) that's what it's there for. And it can tell you within five minutes how to do it. And particularly something like ManyChat and like all the the funnels for the DMs, like I've spent the last month really focusing on that for a number of clients. And it's just amazing like what that can do. And the bit that I love is the fact that nobody's even trying to hide the fact that it's, you know, that it's a I, I love it because we I call like, it oh, out. I call it my little exactly. uh, my little spark bot. <laughs> and it's perfect. And it's like call it out. Like I think I yeah. nicknamed ours. What did I call ours? I I actually gave ours a name. I can't even remember what I gave it. I, I call I called it something. But it's he's got it, the little bot's got a name. It's like I'm such and such from the event wanderer co. And I'm like, that's what you do. He's an actual employee within our stuff. That's so, so cool. and it's it's just like let's not try and hide this. It's like he's he's an actual person. He's he's AI or whatever he might be. Yep. But he's he's got his place within our business. So yep, just just like our dog does. So our dog's our <laughs> perfection officer. That's what I called him. He, for whatever reason, our dog gets more traction on our Instagram account than anything else. Everyone <laughs> loves our dog, so he's the best. Um, but yep. So we put him in our business. He goes everywhere oh, with us. We take him to expos where we're allowed to take pets and he gets more, the dog gets more attention than our actual signage does. Like it's hilarious. Like people just come back to pat the dog for half an hour. It's a good um, draw card. It's a great draw card. Forget yeah. merch, bring a dog. He's actually our secret marketing weapon. That's the reason why we take him everywhere. Um, I love it. Look, he's a Cavalier King Charles Spaniel. He's just cute. Oh. So yeah, I think we had um the most recent we did not we did an open for inspection not an open for inspection we did a um open house for a wedding venue and we took him up there and they were quite happy to have him because they wanted to illustrate they were a pet friendly venue mm. and I swear to God we had one couple that literally just stayed there for half an hour patting him he was oh. in heaven he was like this is great I'll go home with them I was like no, <laughs> um, but yeah no you you got to call it out just. Yeah, hide from it, people just people get, get it. it. People get it, you know. Like you know, everyone's used to technology these days. I think sometimes we stress ourselves out about what people will think, but it's like no. the biggest priority cu- potential customers have is speed of information. Hundred percent. So if you're not the type of person that's going to sit on Instagram every day and reply to DMs within you know hours, just set up the chatbot and it's done. And everyone's like, great, I have the information I requested. Exactly. Exactly. And that is, that is where, that's actually part of what I love doing. It's like, mm. okay, how can we use technology to improve your business? Yes. And also how can we use technology to give you more time back with your family or more time doing the things that you love whilst your business is just ticking over in the background? So, yeah. Exactly. Cause that's where the magic happens. I think so many people are like, how do I scale? Like, how do I grow my business? And it's like exactly this conversation. It is systems, processes, technology, get things to work without you having to touch it. Yep. hundred percent, which now means now reminds me, I need to go and set up a few systems and processes in my own business. <laughs> They're never ending. I mean, so we never said doing, they'd end. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm so good at doing them in other people's business, but again, it's like that time of, okay, so I need to put aside an hour for yes. my own day. But one of the greatest things, actually, my business coach and my mentor, 
um, she's like, you need to take time away each week and have a CEO day for yourself. And it's a like, thousand you know what? Percent. she is right. She's a hundred percent on the mark. And I know she does hers on a Monday. I do mine now on a Friday and it's like, that could just be a job for tomorrow. So yes. it's like set up your own systems and processes and take that time for yourself to spend it in your own business and just close the rest of the world out for a few hours and get the stuff that you need done, done. So, it's so true. Like that is like the best tip having a CEO day. I yep. think that, I mean, I guess that's what this whole, where this conversation started, yep. but it is that idea that, you know, if realistically you are the only person that cares if your business succeeds yep. or fails. So how much time are you spending actually planning, strategizing, setting the big vision, stepping away, making the business work better if you're not prioritizing that, then no one else will. Exactly. Exactly. And it's also the thing too is, is if you've got people around you to support you, you've got to share that vision with them too. Yes. Because you can't, and I'm guilty of this too. Like I've got an incredibly supportive partner and he is my number one salesman. He can sell ice to Eskimos. He's amazing <laughs> at it. And he has learned so much about the wedding industry in the last three years that he has never dreamed he ever would have known. Mm. But I am incredibly guilty of the fact that because obviously we live in the same house, he sees everything come in. He sees everything go out. I just assumed he'd know what I do. Mm. And it kind of hit me one day when I was just like, oh, why don't you know that? And he's like, well, you've never actually taken the time to tell me what it is you do. And I'm like, oh, actually that's on me. Because again, I've just assumed because you've been living in proximity of it all, you've just seen it. Yeah. And it is now we actually have, because he has stepped into the business and he helps me run the actual, like he helps me actually run it. We now actually make time and we have a weekly meeting and we talk about the business every day. He's like, okay, what do you need me to do today? If, the, if there is anything that you need me to do, like, have we got orders going out this week? Have we got events this week? You know, we've got an expo coming up next week. And he's like, okay, so what's our selling point for me for next weekend? Like, what do you want me to home in for summer? Mm. And it's just those little things because now he's more aware, but I'm also more aware that as the CEO, as much as he is my partner, he's also my support network. And yes. I need to ensure that he feels supported to be able to support me. So it's kind of like the, I need to give him the information and just can't assume that he, he knows what's going on in my business. So yeah, that's been a real learning curve, but that's probably the piece of advice too, is, is if you've got somebody around you, like your family who is supporting you, take mm -hmm. the time to actually talk to them and explain what you're doing. Yeah. Because that will help in the long term because he's just as passionate about this business as I am. And it's funny, like I... When we do go to wedding expos and I listen to him talk about me, I get really choked up because oh. it's not just him selling what we do, but it's actual pride that comes yeah. through too because he's so proud of what I've achieved. And I just sit there going, well, I can't do this without his support. Yeah. And so it's, it's you know, this bundle of emotions that we actually get when we're, we're out there trying to put ourselves forward and trying to get people to engage with us. And it's... It's really funny because like when clients then come back to me and I was like, oh, you know, how did we meet? And they're like, oh, you know, we were talking to your partner at the wedding expo. And I'm like, how good. He's the one that draws them in. So, yeah, when I can't take the dog, take him. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I just think it's really a really good point, you know, anyone that is involved in your business, getting them to buy into the yep. dream, you yep. know, and as the CEO of our businesses, that is our job. You know, yes, we often wear so many hats and we have to do all the jobs, but one of our main jobs is to get everyone to buy into our vision, whether that be a customer, whether it be a VA, whether it be our partner, yep. our family, or like whoever it is, you know, that is our job to be yep. selling the mission, to be selling the dream. 100%. And when, when you brief those people in, particularly your VAs and your staff and all that, mm. then that's when your business is going to succeed. Yes. 100%. 100%. Yeah. yeah. That's it. If people know why they are doing their job, yep. uh, it's so much more powerful than just do this task. Exactly. Exactly. And they, yeah, it's, well, it helps them think more critically as well. Like if they're like, oh, well now I know why I'm doing this. This isn't the best way to do this. No, 
100%. So people can bring in their ideas as well. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. It's so much easier, and and I speak from experience with this one. Like one of my one of my clients, it was when I saw her work in person mm. that the penny dropped. It was like I get it now. I get yeah. what we're sitting here trying to achieve. And since that moment, my work in her business has been so much easier. Yeah. Because I get it. Like I've seen her working in person. I've seen her engaging with her clients. I've seen the end result. And she's just not a face on the end of the camera anymore. It's like I've been there physically in a room with her. I've stayed with yes. her. It's it's that whole thing. It's like, yep, it's just it's easeful now. It's like we catch yeah. up two or three times a year. I fly up to Queensland to see her. It's it's just easy and it's the best. And it's I know now that her business will succeed because I've seen that. And it's so much easier. Yeah. I love it. All right, Tanya, you and I could talk all day. We could. We could. <laughs> Lucky we don't have wine today. Otherwise, everyone would be in for a treat. But I always love to wrap these podcasts with one last piece of advice. So reflecting on your time in your multiple businesses, <laughs> what would be one piece of advice that you would give to another woman in business on her journey? Oh, the biggest piece that I've got to say is one, back yourself mm. and also trust your gut. Like the biggest, I feel like there's so many times on the business journey where we waver and we think I'm not good enough. I'm not going to succeed. I There's no point in me doing this. But then the next day can completely change that, you know, you can go a week without a sale coming through. You can go a week without an inquiry coming through. And then all of a sudden you can have a day where two or three inquiries come through or two or three sales come through. And it's just that case of back yourself because if you've come up with this idea, you know and you believe in what you're doing and you're doing it for the right reasons. You've gone into business for the right reasons. So back yourself and trust your gut more than anything. It's yeah, it's it's the biggest piece of advice I can give to anyone. It's don't don't just give up at the first hurdle. Just keep going. It it will all work out in the end. Um yeah, that's probably my best piece of advice after all these years. I love it. I, I would not be here if I'd given up. <laughs> oh my god, and that's it. There is a, there's a quote that's something like you only you only fail when you give up. Like yeah, so if you if you keep trying then you can't you literally no. can't fail. Just don't give up. Just keep keep going. It'll all work out. Oh, beautiful. Tanya, you're amazing. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing your journey, insights, wisdom, tips with the Pleasure. Spark community. It's been absolutely fabulous to have you on the show today. Lovely. Well, thank you so much for having me.